very good afternoon and a very good evening to you. The good morning people of YouTube. Hope you are today I'm feeling grand and all as well in your world. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of How to Play Like the Legendary Mr. John Fushiante. My hero himself. Anyway, uh, yes, the song we're gonna learn today is Sir Psycho Sexy, and I've been um I've been asked uh, a lot. Can you teach the outro of Sir Psycho Sexy? No, I will not just teach the outro. Um, it's a bad habit to learn, it's a bad habit to get into, and it's a bad habit in general, to just learn parts of songs. You will learn the whole song its entirety. You will learn more, and you'll progress as a player more that way. Because one day you might get asked to play the whole song, and you might not know it, and then you're in trouble. Trust me, been there. Oh, do you know how to play this song? Yeah, I do. You play one bit, and then I do you know the rest. Nah. So, it's always important to learn the whole song front to back, not just the bit you like. So, not just the solo, just because, not this, any of it. Learn the whole song, it's really important. So, uh, so I'm going to teach the whole thing today, uh, front to back. So, um, so Psycho Sex is made up of kind of a couple of different parts, and I'm going to kind of teach them in order, but I obviously won't be going back on that order. So, I'll teach like the intro Wawa riff, the, the verse riff, the chorus, um, the kind of like there's like a mid-section kind of uh, breakdown bit where it's... That bit. So I'll be teaching that bit. So it'll go intro, wah wah riff, verse, chorus, uh, interlude. I'll call it the interlude. And then um, there's like a middle section where everything calms down and goes really quiet. And I'll teach that bit and then we'll talk about the outro at the end. Because the outro is... The outro is actually the most complex part. There's a lot of Jimi Hendrix uh, in the outro. A lot of Jimmy-isms, uh, I'm going to call them, uh, that appear in the outro. So, uh, so yeah. So, yes, I won't be teaching just the outro of so, so, so Sexy like people ask. I will be teaching the whole thing because, like I say, it's, it's important to learn full songs. Don't just learn bits. It's really not good. It's, it's a bad habit, to be honest with you. It's a very, very bad habit for a guitarist to get into. You will be learning full songs. So... Without further ado, let's talk about Sir Psycho Sex. Before we get into teaching, let's talk about the setup John mainly uses for this song. Okay, so, uh, another bit of hair falling out there. Goodbye, my friend. Anyway, uh, yes, it's mainly, about 90% of the song is bridge, single coil, pickup. Uh, John only uses the neck pickup for the outro. It's only, he only switches to the neck for the outro. 90% of the song, all the verses, the chorus, the interlude, and, and the quiet bit are all on your bridge pickup. So that's the pickup we'll be using mostly, but the outro will be on the neck pickup. And we'll, you know, that, that, that's that. So, you know, you, just, you don't have to switch to your neck until the end. Um, it's a standard kind of John-esque kind of sound. It's, it's clean, but not clean. The live version is a lot more distorted than the album version. The album version is actually really clean and compressed. And it also has chorus on it in the in the uh, in the album version, which I'm not going to use today. Um, it was a DOD chorus as well. It wasn't a C1 chorus. It was a the C1 was broken at that point in time, so you used the DOD chorus. And it's a lot more subtle than uh, the the C1. It's it's a lot more subtle. So John's clean tone on the Book of Sex Magic album is a lot cleaner, more compressed, but it's still got a little bit of grit to it, and it's all in parts. They recorded it all in parts. So the verse part that goes, that bit is a different part to the chorus and, and so on and so forth. They're all different guitar tones. It was just layered, basically. And uh, all Blood Sugar Sex Magic, and you know, I've, I'm pretty sure and I've been told it was recorded to a click. And you can kind of hear that in it. It's very, very uniform. Okay, so the tone you're going for, it wants to be really a fair, you know, just your standard kind of John tone. Not clean, not too distorted, but, you know, Quite, quite gritty. You know, not not horrifically kind of like you know massively distorted. Not not clean. Not clean. Not clean and like heavily kind of like compressed. Really, you won't get away with some of the bits you need to use, like the wah wah. Okay, so so that's the sound you're going for. John only uses one pedal really in this entire song, and it's the Ibanez WH10. Uh, that's all he uses just for. <laughs> get to mine right now it's, it's too close to my feet i'm gonna have to move it back before i do uh, start teaching other than that that's it so it's a cleanish you know standard kind of john tone the only pedal that you're going to use is the ibanez wah 
unless you want to add a chorus on top as well, but it's not necessary. John never used the chorus live. It was only on the album version. And even then, it's not on throughout the entire song. It's only on in parts. It's only on in that, in that verse part. It's, on, it's only really... That where the chorus is on, the rest of it, it's not really there, including the outro. So, um, so yeah, so, without further ado, cleanish tone, bridge pickup mostly, net pickup for the outro, WH10 wah wah for the, um, for the wah wah parts, obviously, and, uh, and that's it. That's all we're gonna do. It's, it's very, very simple of what John's actually doing, and the parts are fairly straightforward apart from the outro, which is quite in depth. Okay, so, without further ado, let's move the camera in, move my pedal board out of the way so I can actually get to my wah wah. And let's get to teaching Sir Psycho Sexy. It's one of the coolest titles for a song ever, and it's one of the coolest songs ever. <gasps> breathe, Dave, breathe. Okay. Okie dokie. So, uh, let's get to part one of Sir Psycho Sexy, which is kind of the intro, kind of wah-wah riff. And it also comes back in after the kind of interlude section. Um, and, it, 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 and it's this. <laughs> Okay, so that's the first riff. So what we're doing really is quite simple. Uh, you don't have to start with a slide, but it sounds cool. And John always did it live. It was really cool. Way so basically all you're doing is a sliding down your low E string. Like that. And basically just increasing the wah. So it's like, wow, like that. So that's all what's going on there. And it still sounds really cool. So the first note we're going to play after that is... Is this note here? It's a G note, and it's on the fifth fret on the D string, and it's that. So it's okay. So it's that that G note there, fifth fret D string, in that rhythm. And what you're doing with the wah wah is you're gradually increasing it. So it's so it's wah 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 wah, wah like that. So. And you're also doing these kind of muted strums before, which you don't have to do. John would do it. John does it every now and again. It, it, it's a thing you don't have to do. The actual album version is a lot cleaner. He doesn't do it at all. He just comes in going. He's just a lot cleaner, but you can do these muted strums. You know, it's kind of like a Jimi Hendrix voodoo child kind of thing. Okay, so that's the first note in that in that rhythm. Da -na -na. And as I just say, as you're doing those da -na -na, you might be going da -na -na. you know, even do it with a wah. So it's all the way back to start on the da, midway, ne, ne, all the way forward. So all the way back, all the way forward by the end. So like that. Okay, so that's the first note. The next two notes are a uh, uh, a string. Fifth fret, and then we go to the seventh fret on the A string. So it's a, a D note and an E note. Okay, so the whole thing, really slow, is this. Okay, so it's 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 fairly simple. Let me do it without the wire wire. It might be a bit uh, a bit, bit easier to hear. So it's. I just did that for I don't know why reason. Anyway, so that's it basically. That's basically that entire riff, and there is one little variation which we'll get to in a sec. But that's it. So it, and it's all about feel. Again, I talk about this all the time, but it is all about feeling this. You can hear the kind of bass line. So if you kind of like, down, 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 you know what I mean? So you can hear that, you know, you can hear the bass and you've got to lock in with that bass, feel, uh, fleas feel, basically. You've got to really lock in with that and really kind of get the, the rhythm right. Okay, and the only variation on this riff is when John does this. Again, which is a, a very Jimi Hendrix thing to do. And all you're doing is basically hammering on and pulling off between the 5th fret on the A string and the 7th fret on the A string. Like that. So the whole thing, uh, the intro is... Okay, 
right? And then you do it again. And it basically happens twice. So if this is one. <laughs> That's one. It only happens one more time after that. So it's basically, you know, four times, if you will. One, you, you get, you play this note twice, and then you play these kind of notes twice, if that makes any sense. Hopefully that makes sense. But you can hear it in the song anyway. You can kind of like, you know, if you listen to the song, you'll, you'll get you'll get where, it, where it's going and when it changes and, and all that uh, malarco. So, um... Is it Malarkey Dave? No, it's not. You're an idiot. Okay, moving along. Okay, so after out of this part, when Anthony starts singing, uh, you're still doing this bit. But after that, we come into a kind of the main kind of rhythm of the verse, and the main rhythm of the verse is quite. It's not as easy as it appears. It's it, it, it's it's strange. It's you got to keep it very clean, and very kind of like precise. If if that makes any sense, it can't be kind of messy. It's got to be really precise it's it's very james browny kind of like guitar percussion if you will so uh the chord for the verse is this and it's a really i don't know it's a really really cool kind of sounding chord and you have to play it in a very strange way uh but it's very cool so you want your middle finger on the seventh fret on the a string so you're playing the e note okay and then you want your ring finger to bar the g b and high E strings on the seventh fret as well. So the low E and the D string are not played. So it's just the A string, G string, B string, and high E string. And it's this chord. Okay, so that's that's the chord we're after in the verse. So coming out of this bit. <laughs> I've missed a bit out. Before you come into that bit, I've just remembered, I do apologise everybody. Before you come into that chord, you do this on the D note. So it's just the fifth fret on the A string, you just go dun 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 dun, and then you come into this chord. Okay? And that's the rhythm of it. it and it's, you've got to be so clean with it. And again, You've got to lock in to Chad and to Flea. You've got to really listen to them. You can't just go like willy-nilly off on one. You've really got to listen to the groove that the bass and the drums are doing because to lock in. Otherwise, it won't it won't work. It won't lock and it won't sound right and it won't feel right. And it is it's quite difficult. It's not as simple as it appears. It really isn't. So this is the rhythm that you want to be doing. So after the <laughs> Okay, and I've missed out a bit in there because I'll get to that in a minute. But that's the rhythm, straight out the gate. Okay, so I'll try and do it really slow. I think that's the same speed, Dave. It's actually really hard to slow it down. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully you can kind of hear what's going on there. So, so basically, the whole thing so far up to this point is you get the intro, a short version, so when Anthony sings to Psycho Sexy That Is Me, that's when you go into this part here. And I say, you can hear it anyway, and, and I'd really advise playing along to the song uh, when you're learning songs. Learn them and then play along to them relentlessly to lock them into your brain. Otherwise, they will just disappear and you'll forget them. Okay, so uh, after this part, John does this, which is really cool, and I love this bit. So basically, what you're doing is you're going from this chord... And then you're going up to the ninth fret on your B and high E strings with your ring finger, uh, sorry, your middle, yeah, your ring finger, sorry. And then you hit it, you kind of go down with a, like a, a dead strum, like, like that, so it's just muted. And as you come up with the up, with the up pick, 
you slide it down. Okay, so like that. And it fits in like this. Okay? Let's try to do it one more time. Try and try and I'll try and do it slowly, everyone. I'm having difficulty with slowing this one down for some reason. Okay, so. Okay, one more time just for look. Okay? So you kind of hear that fits in. And again, it's not as simple as it appears. It's 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 got to be so clean and precise and you've got to be really careful not to kind of be going like <laughs> You know, not, not just adding extra notes that aren't there. It's really clean. And when you don't need to play, you need to just be muting the strings. Uh, which brings me on to my next point, which is the whole string muting finger bounce, which I'll talk about in a sec when we get when we go when I get to it. So the whole thing so far in the verse is this. Okay? So that's the verse predominantly. You know, that, that, that's like, you know, 99.9% .9 of the verse. There are some variations, which I'll get to in a sec. But first, I want to talk about finger bouncing and muting strings. So basically, what you're doing, when you want this chord, you want to be, well, when you don't want it, you want your fingers just resting on the strings. So it's just dead. Okay? So at this point in time, all the strings are dead. My thumb is killing the low E string, as well as my middle finger killing the low E string. And then that finger is also killing the D string. And then my G, uh, my middle finger is basically killing the G, B, and E. It's not pressing down enough to get the harmonic. It's just, and it's in the middle of the fret, which is where it wants to be. Yeah, just like you were fretting the chord. Uh, and it just wants to be so you can go down all the strings and none of them make a noise. Okay? And what you're doing is, basically, when you want the chord, you just press it down. When you don't want it, you just lift it off. And you want to bounce your fingers. So every time you hear, okay. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, like you say, you want to be just like pressing down when you want it, lift off immediately when you don't, and it, it takes a bit of getting used to to kind of like to know how much pressure to put on the strings, just enough to kill them. Because if it's too little, you get that. And if it's too much, you get the chord. So to get to get nothing, it just takes you know just a bit of practice, just to kind of understand how much pressure you need on the guitar strings, so it doesn't make any noise. Okay, and that's where the the, the finger bounce comes in. And again, because you're bouncing your fingers and killing the chord immediately, it makes it a lot cleaner. If you're not bouncing your fingers and you just leave the chord down, it just rings out and it's just messy. You know, it, it, it's not the song, it's not the rhythm, it's... Okay? So, and again, it's not as easy as it appears, it really isn't. There's, there's, actually, there's actually quite a lot of um, discipline in doing that as well, and, and creating that rhythm and killing it dead when you're not playing, and not overplaying. Because as guitarists, we like to overplay. And it's just our little curse, basically. Guitarist curse is to want to overplay and add things that aren't there. Okay, so that's the rhythm. That's the finger bounce. That's the kind of muted technique that John's using in this song to kind of create that rhythm, that percussive rhythm sound that's really clean and, you know, precise. Okay, so we've got the intro. We've got the main verse. Let's talk about verse variation riffs now. Okay, so verse variation is quite, again fairly simple he's just doing this and then there's stops okay so on the first time around on this thing so this is the, this is that that what i just played is one section okay and then there's a stop and again if you listen to the song you can hear where the stops are so, after, uh, so uh, what's, uh, what's the, what's the words? I forget the words. But if you listen to the track, you can hear it. Stop. 
second part. Okay, exactly the same as the first part, but at the end of the second time, every time, apart from the last verse, which I'll get to later on, uh, John does this. Well, John, Flea and Chad all do this. Okay, so it's just your D note on the fifth fret on your A string going da, 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 da. And again, you're doing the same thing again with a mutating. You're bouncing that finger, so it's really staccato way. It's not... It's... Okay? So, first time is this. Stop. Then... Second time. So, and it goes on from there, but every second time, like I just like I just played, you do that, okay? Apart from the last verse before the outro, because the, uh, the second time is the intro to the outro, if that makes any sense. So basically, on the, out, on, the, on the last verse, you go around once, and it's exactly the same as normal. The second time around, when you come to the, instead of doing that, you go into the, you know, into the outro. Okay, so, and that's it. That's basically the verses. Um, they're very straightforward, but again, they're not as easy as they appear. There's a lot more to them than kind of meets the eye, so to say. It's not as kind of, it's not, it's not a case of like, you know, just, oh, yeah, there we go kind of thing. It's actually quite, there's actually a fair amount of discipline in, in what it does. So the whole thing so far, abridged, if you will, just, um, you know, really, really quick from intro to kind of like where we are so far, which is the kind of start of a chorus, but like that, um, is this. So now we're coming into the chorus, and the chorus has got one of the coolest guitar parts in the world. So, intro has the wah wah, then you turn off the wah wah for the verse, and then you turn on the wah wah again for the chorus. So, the chorus is. Okay? And it's. It just sounds really cool. I've just noticed I'm picking the camera out a bit with my guitar volume. So, um, and it just sounds really cool. So what you're doing here in the chorus is really, really, really strange. And this is what I've got that John's doing. It's actually quite hard to hear it because it's kind of disguised by the wah-wah, but I think this is what John's doing. Is um, you want to be on the ninth fret on your G and you want to be on the 11th fret on your B. So those notes there, and you're bending both of them up, like that. So, and with the wah wah, you're just going wow, like that. And it's just really quick. Okay, so I think that's what John's doing. I'm not 100% on this one, but this is what I figured out, and this is what he seems to be doing if you watch him. And this is what it sounds like he's doing. But again, I could be wrong, but uh, if not, it's a very close approximation. So, this is the only bit of the song I am not 100% sure on everybody. So, let it be known for other lands. Okay, so, but like I said, it's a... Okay, so that's what's going on there. So, you're bending up the ninth fret on the G and the B string on the 11th fret. Like that. And it's just a quick bend. 
And they don't really have to be bent to any kind of pitch. It's just a noise more than anything, especially with the wah wah engagement. Wow. Yeah, it's just wow. It's a lot like the, uh, it's a lot like Yurtle the Turtle, in a way. Okay, but that's another song for another occasion. So after the, you go to the 10th fret on the G, and then you go to the 12th fret on the G, and then you go to the 3rd fret on the G, and then you go to 5th fret on the D, 4th uh, fret D, and then 3rd fret D. Okay, so the whole thing really slow is this. time. Okay? And with a wah-wah, it wants to sound like this. So, basically just like a quick from all the way back to all the way forward on the first bit. And then it's wow wow. So each note is wow wow. And then on this third fret here on the G string, it wants to be at wow, nice and slow. So all the way back to start with and like that. And then it's a single wow 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 on those uh, des those chromatic descending lines. So with the wow wow really slow, you ought to be kind of going for this. <laughs> Okay, and that's the that's that that's the whole chorus basically, and it ends with just this, and you just end on the third fret on the G string, doing a basically and just holding it on, and then you're back into verse two. Okay, so so far the whole thing really condensed is this. And that's the end of the chorus. Forget that D note. That was me messing up, and also that bit there. But um, uh, but yeah. So that's the whole thing so far. It's quite it's quite simple, but not easy. If that makes any sense. It, it, it's very simple in what it is, but it's not easy in what it is because it's there's so much groove and feel to the song. It's it's quite hard to um to to nail that. Is 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 quite hard to lock to, you know, to lock in straight away. Okay, so that's basically it for quite a while. So basically, you got the intro, wah wah riff, and then you got the ver then then you got the verse, and then you've got the chorus. Then you go into verse two, and after verse two, you go into the chorus again, and out of that chorus, you come into this section. <laughs> Which is kind of like, it's kind of like an interlude really. It's not really a solo, it's just kind of like an interlude bit in the song. It's just kind of like, um, it's like a middle, if you will. Okay, so this section is really, really cool. Again, it, it incorporates that kind of bouncing of the fingers thing to make it really clean and precise. So the first chord we want to be going for, it's mainly all triads. Well, it, it is all triads, should I say, apart from the, uh, from the end. Is um is this? So you want to be barring the D, uh, the fifth fret on the D, G, and B. So, so that's the first chord. Second chord, we move that shape up to the seventh fret. Okay, so and then the the next chord is this. Okay, so basically it's like a kind of D in a way. Um, your first finger is on the seventh fret on the D. Your middle finger is on the 8th fret on the B. And then your ring finger is on the ninth fret on the G. Okay, so it's... Okay, and it's played, again, with that muted bouncing finger technique where it's really clean. Okay. 
not. You know. So he's totally dead when you don't want it. Okay, so, um, so yeah, that's the first part. And then you go to this, which is uh, fifth fret on the D to the seventh fret on the D. So, bang. And then you go back to this chord. And then you go to that chord. So it's one, two, one, two, one. And then you go to this lick, which is really cool. Fifth fret on the G. And then up to the seventh fret on the D. Okay? So the whole thing so far, really slow, is this. So one more time. Okay. And you kind of feel the rhythm of it, you know, at any kind of speed. It's like a... Okay. So next time, after that, go up again. Same riff. My favourite John Frusciante lick of all time. Okay, this one, what you're doing is you're bending up the 7th fret on the G to the 9th fret. And then you and then you release the bend immediately. It's kind of like when you bend up, you don't let it come back down. It's just to that note. And then you go to the 5th fret on the G. So... Okay, so the whole thing so far, really slow. I love that leg. I could play that all day happily and never get bored of it. Okay, so that's basically kind of, you know, that's that kind of first section, so to say. So at speed, it's... And I'm putting these extra strums in just to keep time. He doesn't actually do that, John doesn't. John actually plays it like. It's a lot cleaner, a lot more precise. I was just putting those bits in just for um, just to keep time when it was slower. It's quite hard to do. So, um, so yeah, just bear that in mind. There isn't those extra strums. It's clean, again, using that muted bouncing finger technique. And uh, that's what's going on there. Okay, so after you, you go again. When you get to this bit, you come out of this middle section. And what you're doing is uh, this chord. So... Uh, like the like the main verse chord that you've got, where you've got uh, the A, D, uh, G, B, and E strings going, you're doing that shape exactly the same on the fifth fret this time. So your uh, middle finger is on the fifth fret on the A string, and then your ring finger is buying the G, B, and E strings on the fit on the fifth fret. And then your E and your D are dead. They're just killed by either you, you know you form all these fingers. Okay. So what, what happens there is, you know, you go around that same thing again, it re kind of repeats itself. But when you get to this bit, when you get to that chord there, bam, bam, on the... Instead of going back to here, you go to that chord on the fifth fret, and you, what you do is, it's a muted strum. And then on the upstroke, up you hit the chord. So muted strings. And then press them down. And then you go up to the same same shape on the sixth sick fret. Same thing again. Like that. And then you end up with just a low E string. Okay. So out of that bit. That bit. Okay. One more time really slow. So out of this bit.
and that's it. <laughs> that, that, that's that midsection. So the whole middle section uh, is like, oh, and it's done with a wah wah as well. The whole midsection is like, is like there. <laughs> Okay, and out of that section we come back into this bit. Okay, and then we're back into that riff. Okay, so next part, let's move along. So after that, that, that kind of like intro riff again, if you will. That bit. We come into this quiet kind of breakdown bit almost, where it's really, everything's really subdued, everything's kind of pulled back and really calm all of a sudden. It's really, really cool. And uh, it get into that bit like this. <laughs> Okay, so out of here, you play that note once, and again, listen to the song, you'll hear where these parts are, and you'll also feel them as well, you'll, when you start playing the song, you'll feel them. So you go on that uh, on that G note, the uh, fifth fret on the D string, and then you go to this A chord, which is like a weird kind of I don't I don't know what these chords are, so don't you know I don't know what they are. Someone else will have to tell you what they are. I just know I know how, I just know that's what they are. If that makes any sense. So John actually plays these in a really kind of awkward way. He actually plays them like that, but I find it a lot easier to use my thumb. So. Uh, I use my, the chord we've got here is, my form is on the 5th fret on the low E, and then I have this kind of D major shape on the on the D, G and B string. So my first finger is on the 5th fret on the D, my middle finger is on the 5th fret on the B, and my ring finger is on the 6th fret on the G. Okay? And then the A string and the high E string are not played, they're, they're both dead. And you basically just hit that. So how you get into it is like this. And what you want to do, as soon as you hit that chord, you start turning your volume down to lower the gain down because it needs to be quiet. And you see John doing it live. He immediately goes to his volume control once he hits that A because it lowers the intensity and brings the dynamic down. So instead of just kind of like hitting that A and it just being like this, he actually does this. And you can hear everything just go down to that next level. Okay. Okay, so that's how we get into that bit. And then the midsection chords are this. So it's an E, kind of seven, if you will. So first finger wants to be on the uh, seventh fret on the A. I'll turn the wah wire off, Dave. Uh, yeah, seventh fret on the A string. Then your middle finger wants to be on the seventh fret on the G. And then your ring finger wants to be on the B string on the eighth fret. Okay, so that's the first chord. And I'll talk about the, the tapping, the tapped harmonic technique in a sec. But these are the chords we want to be doing in this mid, in this kind of like, you know, the, the bring down section. So this is the first chord, the E. Just three notes. The, a, the D, E, and high E are not played. It's just those three strings. Okay, so that's the first chord. The next chord is a B, and it's the same chord as the kind of the A chord, so to say. Form over the top. I'll, I'll teach John's way in a sec. But form over the top on the seventh fret on the low E. And then you've got your first finger on the seventh fret on the D, ring finger on the seventh fret on the B, and uh, sorry, middle finger on the seventh fret on the B and your ring finger on the uh, eighth fret on the G. And they are gorgeous chords together. So the E, and then the B. Okay. So that's the first two chords of this, this quiet down section. And um, again, I don't want to talk about the technique of how to play these at a point in time. I want to get the chords under your fingers first. So that's the first chord. goes around again. There is no measure. 
And then there's a kind of a build-up section where you go back to that A. So it's exactly the same shape as the B and how we got into this section. And you just kind of go... And then back up to the B. And then back to the E. And then second build up, well that's build up into the third verse, you go, you move this shape up one fret to a C. So it's exactly the same shape, but it's basically now on the, between the seventh, uh, sorry, the eighth and the ninth fret. And then you go back down to the seventh fret. Okay. And how John plays this, I'll get to that now before I talk about how John actually uh, John uses his fingers to play these chords because John does it in a really it's a very awkward way John does it and he actually kind of fumbles to get to them sometimes you can see live he actually kind of almost doesn't struggle but his fingers do have that momentary kind of time to get to these shapes in the way he plays it and it's really strange John being a big user of his thumb doesn't use his thumb to do those those chords but anyway but how John plays this is he taps around the, uh, where are we, 17, 18, 19, the 19th, 20th, and the 21st fret on his guitar. And it's with his wah-wah as well. So you turn your volume down to about four, and you basically just tap around these last three frets. And John actually uses his whole hand, he actually does that. Oh, oh I do have actually think, I think he's just using his middle finger. But it just looks like he's using his whole hand. But he's like this. And basically all you're doing there is you're hitting the harmonic of the chord. So this shape here on the A, uh, G and B strings is mimicked here. Exactly the same notes, just an octave higher. And you're basically just hitting those notes. He's kind of just doing it kind of haphazardly, really. Just, and just, think, you know, just messing around with the wah. There's no set wah-wah thing on this. It's just... And there's no real kind of set rhythm on this either. You just kind of... You go by what you feel in this section. And that's what's going on there. And again, have your volume down, especially if you've got the Ibanez wah, because the Ibanez wah will kick up the volume, and it, you don't you don't want this. You know, it's too unruly. Where if you've low your volume down to four or quite low, it becomes quite ethereal. So that's how John's playing this section. You just tap into strings. And you can either get rid of your pick and your finger like that. Or you can just put it in your mouth. Uh, I don't actually know what John does with his pick. I think he I think he just gets rid of it and then just grabs another one when he needs it. So to say off his pick stick on his mic stand. But uh, that's what's going on here. It's basically just tapped harmonics. The first chord, you just hit with a plectrum. And then roll your volume down. And then to your finger. gentle the better because it's quiet section then the second time for your love there is no better that bit So when we get to this C part, we can start hitting the guitar harder. When you hit that B, roll your volume back up and into the last verse. Which live, John would leave his wah-wah on for. So it would kind of come out of that section and go...
But again, that's totally up to you. If you want to leave a wah wah on, you can. You don't have to at all. It's totally up to you. And that's the third verse. Okay, so where are we now? So we've got the intro riff, this bit. <laughs> And it's a little variation. Okay, and then you got your verse. Remember on every second time do this. Okay, remember every second time in verse one and verse two, that dun 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 on the second time round. Okay, uh, and then you got your chorus. And that's your chorus, and then you got your mid section. Uh, and then back into that bit, and then you got your quiet section. And so on and so forth, and then back into verse three. And verse three is quite short, uh, and you can hear when it changes because Anthony sings. Uh, 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 what is it? It's so nice out here. I think I'll stay for a while. And when that line comes up, you know it's getting to the outro. And let's get to the outro now, everybody. So let's go to the outro. I'm just gonna have to go and get a drink. Uh, I don't like editing videos, and I don't like doing videos, but I'm gonna go and get a drink. So I'm gonna drive through. And the outro is the most. Um, sought after part of Psycho Sexy and it's also the most complex. So give me one sec everybody. I'll be back in but a split second. Okie dokie. So um hello again everybody. So uh, so far we've been on the bridge pickup of um either a Telecaster or a Strat, depending on how John felt. I've seen him play it on his 55, I've seen him play it on his 62 and I've seen him play it on his telly. So um you know as long as it's a single coil you're okay. As long as you've got two pickups you're okay. Okay, so most of the time we've been on this bridge pickup, it's now time to flick to the neck pickup for the outro. And that kind of works like... In that gap. Okay? And it's, you know, you just got that little split second, it's just enough time to go whack, and there you go, you're into neck pickup, and away you go. Okay, so... Let's go to neck pickup, let's talk about the chords first. So what are the chords for the outro? The most requested part of this song, everybody, is the outro. So the chords are E minor, which is played down here. So first finger wants to be on the seventh fret on the A. Ring finger wants to be on the ninth fret on the D. Little finger wants to be on the ninth fret on the G. Uh, middle finger wants to be on the eighth fret on the B. And you don't play your E's. So both E strings are not played. And John actually plays with his thumb over and, and, and I do, but you don't have to, you can play it like that if you want. So, first chord is an e, e minor. Then we go down chromatically to an E flat major, and uh, John plays it like this. Oh, I didn't talk about the middle section, how John plays those chords. I'll do that at the end. Uh, this is, this is uh, it's, that's not really very important to be honest with you. That's just a Johnism, but it's not really that important. Okay, so first chord, E minor. Next one is E flat major, which you're playing with your first finger on the uh, sixth fret. Then you use your ring finger to bar the, the D, G, and B strings on the uh, eighth. Okay, so, bah, 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 bah. so E major, E minor, sorry, E flat major. Then we go to a B flat major like this, which is thumb or finger over top. It, my thumb. If you ever get confused about like you know, oh, what should I use instead of my thumb? If, wherever my thumb is, it's just your first finger basically. So when I say my thumb, if you can't use your thumb, that's where your first finger goes. If that makes any sense, hope that makes sense. Good gravy, Davy. Anyway, so E major, uh, sorry, E minor, B E flat major. Now we go to a B major, so thumb over top on the 6th fret on the low E. Then ring finger on the 8th fret on the D. Uh, middle finger on the 7th fret on the uh, G. I'm getting confused. Um, and then your first finger wants to be on the 6th fret on the B. So... to a D major. 
So it's the same shape as that E flat. Uh, yeah, the E flat major. Just moved up now. You basically your first finger is on the fifth fret on the A, and then your ring finger is buying the D, G, and B strings on the seventh. Like that. Okay, so E minor, E flat major, B major. I'll do it in normal way, and then D major. That's where we are so far, and then we go to a. Um, <coughs> Sorry, everybody. A G sharp major. So I normally play the full chord here, and John, you normally see John playing the full chord here. The B flat, he normally plays just like, you know, it's not a triad because you've got the bass note in there as well. And also later on, you need the high E string as well, but not right now. Not for the first time through, which is what we're on about. And just general chords in general. When on the B, it's normally just like a shape like that. But when he gets to this G sharp, it's normally the full shape. So thumb over the top on the 4th fret on the low E. Ring finger wants to be on the 6th fret on the A. Little finger wants to be 6th fret D. Um, middle finger wants to be on the 5th fret on the G. And your first finger wants to be barring the B and high E strings. You get all the strings on this G, this G sharp on the 4th fourth, fourth fret. Okay, so I'll try and do it kind of like so, so in in regular patterns, so to say. Okay, that's where we are so far, and this bit is, and then we go down to this E flat major again. To, so E flat major shape again doesn't change. Then we go to a C minor, and again, what we're doing here, we're missing out the A string. So the A string isn't played. So from this G sharp minor, uh, major, sorry, E flat major to G major uh, minor. Okay, like that. So, but John doesn't play the A string because he has twiddles, he has diddly dums to do. So he doesn't play the A string. So, form over the fret, uh, form on the low E string on the 8th fret. And then your ring finger wants to be on the 10th fret on the D. And then your first finger wants to be barring the G, B, and E strings on the 8th uh, fret. Okay? So, whole thing so far E minor, E flat major, B flat major, D major. G sharp major, E flat major, and then C C minor, and then you go back to the G sharp major uh, major again, and then you finish up on the G major chord. So exactly the same shape, just moved down one fret. Okay. So that's all the chords. So one more time, really slow in, in kind of like normal kind of fingering. So say without the kind of a, the form over the top. E flat major, uh, uh, e, ma e minor. Oh, God, good gravy, Dave. E flat major, B flat major, B uh, D major, G sharp major, E flat major, and then C minor, and then G sharp major, and then to G major. Okay. And the rhythm of it is this. slow is like this back 
and so on and so forth. And that's basically the whole progression. That's all the outro is. But then we get to the fun part with all the added little bits and pieces, which I'll get to in but a sec. So, um, so that's it. That's that's the basic. That's the chord progression. That's the rhythm. Um, get that under your fingers first before you start doing the, the diddly dums because um, it'll just make it easier. Then you'll know where you are rhythmically, which is very, very, very important in this outro. Okay. So first time through, John doesn't really do anything. He's just kind of basically just playing chords. <laughs> Until the C major, uh, C minor, where you can do this, which is just ridiculously awesome. So when you get to this bit, you can do twiddle diddly dums like this, and basically all they are, they're coming out of the C minor pentatonic scale. So what you're doing is you're basically leaving this chord shape down. And the reason John doesn't play the A string is so he can manipulate his fingers to get these diddly dums. If you like that, it's a lot harder to kind of manipulate your fingers. But if you do it like that, your ring finger then becomes the diddly dum finger. Okay, and that diddly dum is just quite simple. It's just um, a hammer on. You kind of keep that shape in place, and you hammer on on the D on the on the B string. Sorry, from the eighth fret to the eleventh fret. And then pull off. And then you do the exact same thing again on the G string between the 8th and the and the 10th. And then you finish up on the 10th fret on the D string. Try, I'll try and do it with two fingers, Django Ryan, so you can see. So that whole thing is... And it fits in like that. You can also do it on the high E string. You know. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll try and play some little variations quickly and hopefully you'll be able to kind of see what I'm, what I'm doing. So. That's a kind of common one. Okay, so, and basically you can just do anything you want coming out of that C minor pentatonic scale. In that diddly dum pattern, you know, that the hammer on and pull off, and then resolve it. Diddly diddly dum. Okay, so you can do that over the C, the C minor, and John doesn't really do any, the first time around, John doesn't really do anything until that C minor, so it's kind of like this. Second time around, you do this little lick, which is just ridiculously cool, and you hear it really clearly. So you're basically just playing that E minor, and you're leaving the, uh, leave your middle finger where it is, and you, yeah, you basically just get rid of a chord, and then you just play that uh, that B string on the eighth fret, and then you go to your tenth fret on the B string. So it's a bend up. And then release, and then you get re pull off down to the eighth fret on a B. So, eighth fret B, tenth fret B, bend up, release, and then pull off to the eighth fret. Like that. And then you can go to your E flat, and then you can stick your little finger onto the ninth fret onto the uh, on the B string. And then, then take it off. So, and then get to your B, 
and then you can add diddly dums on this B. So the whole thing so far, what you've got is this. Okay, and what I like to do next is something that John does live, but isn't on the album version. He goes up the octave, so instead of doing an E minor here, he does it here, like that, and then to your E flat minor, uh, major, sorry, there. So it's just the kind of like that shape, and then you go to your B, and to your D here on the tenth fret, and then back to normal. So out of that bit. 12th fret, 11th, 6th, 10th, and he does that and it sounds really cool. Okay, so, other variations, what have we got other variations, because I've realised I'm running out of time on the camera, and that's not good, because I've still got a lot to teach. Okay, so, other variations, so we've got this one. Oh, you can do this. Which is basically what you're doing, is you're hammering on your little finger onto the high E string. When you're on this chord shape, you're hammering onto the high E string on the, uh, where are we, uh, 13th fret. Again, it's a very Jimi Hendrix thing, so. When you go to the B, you can do the same thing. And then on D. Okay, and it's, it kind of comes from that kind of like um, vo uh, highway child thing and stuff like that, and, and uh, Wind Cries Mary. So you go V, e, and on the E flat. And then D. And then back to. It. Those chords there, John Lummy keeps very straight. Doesn't really dawdle and, and, and do diddly dums. Okay, so that's another thing. Another thing you can do is this now. Okay, so what you're doing here is you're playing your E flat major and you get, you're sliding uh, on the eighth fret on the A to the 10th fret on the A. That. So it's, it's A, D, and then G on the 8th and the 10th fret. If I do it like uh, Django Reinhardt style, hopefully we'll be able to kind of like see what I'm on about. It's really hard to explain these things. I, I, I've, I, I've real difficulty trying to explain these things, so hopefully you'll be able to kind of see what I'm doing. So. Okay, so you just basically kind of... Same thing again on the D. Exactly the same pattern as this. Okay, so hopefully you can see, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, what else have we got? Because um, we've got all the, the C, the, like I say, the C minor twiddles, you can go mental basically with just kind of like. With all those diddly dums coming out of that C minor pentatonic shape here. So basically kind of like, you know, if you will, those frets. And it's up to you really, because I mean, the thing is, the thing with the outro is John is just kind of like messing around in that Hendrix style. 
and he's just playing around. There's nothing set in stone, really. It, it, it's very kind of like... It, every time he's different, especially live, you Excuse me. Just of a live version, he always does something different that he never did in the previous one. There are um, undoubtedly things that stay the same, but there are little Hendrixisms that appear there instead of there and, and vice versa. So you got those. And you go. So like. And you can fit that in on the B flat, the E flat as well. Okay, so you got that one, and you got that one. Okay, and then on this on this B flat, you can also go like that. You can do that kind of like pretty little D thing of walking up on the high B and G string. Like that. So, uh, so basically, um, that's it. You know, and, it, and it's kind of free reign to do what you want. John Live would normally kind of do two times around normal. Like that's once, twice. And then after the second time, he would come up to this higher octave. Uh, before going back down to the low one. And so on and so forth. And it, you can also do things on this higher octave like um, using an E minor pentatonic shape. You can kind of add notes in with your little finger on that E minor. Like that. So. That's on the high E string. So that's the 15th and the 14th on the high E. And then you can also add it on the 15th on the B. Do that pretty little ditty thing again on the E flat. Well, basically, wherever there's a major, you can do that pretty little ditty thing. You know, basically whatever you want. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to play through the outro, like maybe uh, three or four times, and put put in as many variations as I can. I'll do it quite slow, and hopefully, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. You can nick what I'm doing. that on the album they go ah great ending Dave they end on the e, an E major live which is really weird considering it's kind of like an E minor so that's it that's the outro that's the chords that's the rhythm that's some of the diddly dums you can well, it's basically all the diddly dums you can kind of do um you could also do this one actually I've just remembered another one on the B flat Which is basically um, eighth fret on the G and high E, and you bend up, you go up to the tenth fret on the on the G and high E on on like that. So it fit in. <laughs> I, I went to should have gone to the D. 
But um, but hopefully you can kind of see. Hopefully there's enough there to kind of take away and, and, and play around with and just kind of like, you know, just have fun with. Because the outro is the most fun part. It's not it's not as strict as the rest of the song. The rest of the song where you're on the bridge pickup is very strict. Do this, do it like that, do it clean and staccato -y and precise. The outro you can kind of just play around a bit more. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it everybody. That's the Psycho Sexy in its entirety. So... I do hope this video has been informative uh, for people who wanted to learn the song and the outro. I hope there's enough fair feed to be kind of going on with and hope it's been informative. I'm, I'm, I'm always terrified it's not a very good video and it's, it's rubbish and not informative and load of rubbish. But um, I hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. I hope it's kind of made sense. I hope, you know, anything that I forgot to mention you can kind of see and, uh, and, and take on. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I will see you again for another video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I will see you again. Have a great morning, afternoon and good evening. Goodbye now.